I'm Jeff Yarger. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics at Arizona State University. I want to make a short video looking at a very simple concept, one that we feel like we probably don't even need a video on. What's the pH of water? So we know it's a pH 7. We're done, right? Actually, to a lot of people's surprise, even over what I would call physiological conditions, the pH varies significantly um, away from pH 7. And I've taken uh, this from uh, Tinoco's book in Physical Chemistry, uh, Principles and Applications in Biological Sciences. So this has been used in the past for uh, BCH 341, um, which is a physical chemistry with a biological focus at ASU. Um, and uh, they do, he does an extremely nice job, the authors um, in chapter four of their book, um, looking at just this question. So I'm drawing from some material out of this book uh, for this video today. Um, so one of the tables, and this would be common in any physical chemistry book, you look up anywhere where you often look up a, a, a series of, of you know, pKa values, for example, for, you know, a bunch of different, any acid-base equilibria, right? Like, you're going to look up, um, you know, equilibrium constants, any type of reaction. And, and, you know, when you see water, you see exactly kind of what you expect. Okay, a pK of 14, right? Like a pKa uh, value, right? We know, you know, it's acid-base uh, chemistry. This is kind of at the heart of what we think of as as, as forming, you know, protons, H pluses, acids, and OH minuses uh, for basic, et cetera, um, and the equilibrium of water. You can also, for any of these, look up, you know, and it's often given the ionization uh, enthalpies, and usually it's, of course, under standard state conditions, so uh, standard pressure and temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Um, and you look that up and, and you see a value of, of 55, you know, kilojoules per mole. Um, and so when we look at that, the way we often look at this is it's 55 kilojoules per mole. And, and how is this obtained um, experimentally? Well, it's obtained by looking at the concentrations of protons or H plus and OH minus water right in, you know, in other words, the equilibrium uh, constant. Um, you know, as a function of, and we usually plot it as the inverse temperature. And so this is going, you know, so this is cold uh, and this is hot, right? So the opposite direction um, that we're used to, to seeing it, right? And this is probably so, oof, if I remember my math very well, this is probably on the order of one inverse, so uh, around 60 degrees Celsius. Um, Less than zero, uh, probably about minus 10 degrees Celsius or so, just to give you kind of a, some temperature ranges. This goes so, so you know, a little below freezing, um, you know, to, you know, below boiling, right? But we're, we're looking at it. And, and you can see, you know, the equilibrium, you know, this is on a log scale, changes significantly over, you know, this temperature range. And that's what allows us with the Van Hoff equation uh, to get you know, at a, um, a delta H for this ionization, for, you know, the reaction of liquid water, you know, going to H plus in aqueous solution plus OH minus in aqueous solution, right? And that's uh, the delta H that we're, you know, looking at for that. So it's telling us that, you know, this is endothermic, right? Uh, that it requires heat to make this ionization, which seems about right if we think of another, what I would say, common thing, which is if you take kind of a strong acid, um, you know, the most common, like something like HCl, uh, strong base, uh, you know, something like sodium hydroxide, lye, right? You combine these two things together, you get salt, uh, NaCl, uh, and water, Right? But we all just know from experience if you do this, if you take lye, a strong base, and ask, it's very, heat is generated. It get, the container gets very hot. It's, it's very exothermic, right? When you take two ions to produce, 
you know, water. So it's not then surprising when you think of it from that standpoint that the opposite, taking water and forming ions, is endothermic, right? So, um, but it also, because of this, you can see that over a range, you know, that we're often looking at, this is in the range that we often look at, the equilibrium shifts a fair amount, and it does so, in a sense, based on Van Hoff's equation. If we're looking at this at constant pressure, right? Um, so, uh, shown here. And um, so, how would we look at this? Well, we said that, um, you know, we're going to say that this is the change in the equilibrium coefficient is, um, and we'll, we'll do, we'll integrate over this from, you know, equilibrium one to equilibrium two, right? It's minus this uh, ionization, uh, but it can be, the nice thing, the Van Hoff equation is for any chemical reaction, so you can write as a general chemical reaction, it's general standard state over R, and then this will be uh, integrated over uh, from T2 to T1 of D1 on T, right? Um, so uh, we'll get that ln of K2 over K1 is equal to minus the delta R, we're looking at the ionization, over one on T2 minus one on T1, right? So, say for example, we want to know the pH of, of water at physiological temperature or, or body temperature, which is you know, 37, um, uh, 37 degrees uh, Celsius, right, in this case. So, uh, we know, you know, K1, we know um, the equilibrium constant you know, at 298, we know our final temperature, you know, 310 Kelvin. We knew our initial temperature, 298, which is the standard state, right? We know the gas constant is 8.3 uh, joule per k-mole. And we know the delta H from this fit of, you know, 55.76 kilojoules per mole. So we can solve in a sense, for K2 in this case. And what we'll find is, is that, um, you know, we'll get a K2 if we do this for 37 of 2.4 times 10 to the minus 14. So it's not 1 times 10 to the minus 14, which is K1. What we started at, it changed some. Um, and so now let's get this, though, in terms of not the equilibrium, which maybe we don't, even if we put this as PK, uh, we might not have uh, as much of a sense for, right, as, you know, what the pH is. So, um, in this case, this reaction is, we know that um, it's the concentration of H plus and OH minus that gives this K2, this equilibrium constant K2, which we said is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 14, right? Because of the reaction, it's water going to form equal molar, we can say that this is the same as the concentration of H plus, you know, times the concentration of H plus or H plus squared, right? Because this has to equal that amount, right? So in a sense, this is just starting, you know, knowing that uh, our reaction is, is water to form these two ions, right? So now, in a sense, we can just take the square root of this number um, so we can, uh, you know, take the square root of this, of K2, uh, to get our hydrogen ion concentration, and we can take minus the log, log base 10, you know, of um, the hydrogen ion concentration is defined to be pH, and we'll get a value of about 6.8. So, Unlike at standard where we'd have, you know, uh, a pH of seven, you know, it's deviated 0.2 units from that. So what I would encourage you to do is look at this at several different temperatures, kind of in this physiological range, as high as, you know, under the boiling point, so something, you know, less than 100 degrees Celsius, and, you know, even you can go a little lower than the melting point because you can supercool water 
you know, significantly into the liquid state, 30, 40 degrees oftentimes before you hit the homogeneous nucleation point. So I hope this very simple question, which is what is the pH of water, and that you can see that it has a significant temperature dependence, you know, will help you in, in, in seeing uh, some basics about equilibrium and how thermodynamics can really help understand even some of the simplest problems. Thank you.